All right, so in the first video, what we looked at was just splitting the kick dynamically. So doing the dynamic splitting with separating the kick out into the transient portion and the sustained portion or the attack and the body attack and tail, whatever. And in this video, I wanna show you the easiest way and the, the simplest way really to get even more bite out of your transient layer, okay? Now this is where we start to get into the fact of why uh, splitting the kick up this way and working this way is better than simply using something like a transient designer. You have so much uh, control here because you could process the kick uh, body and the transient independently of each other. And uh, that's really, really powerful. All right. And so there's actually one more level that I want to take this kick to. Hopefully that came out right. But basically what I want to do is I want to turn the transient from a poke into a punch. And so let me show you what I mean. I'm going to solo this transient layer here and we're going to come back over to the master channel and open up the LFO tool. Now, if we look, it's going to be a little bit of a poke, right? And that makes sense. And let me get it a little bit louder here. So I'm going to turn the transient back up to zero. And so this is a poke. And that's because of the way that we're shaping it with the ADSR. Okay, we have the attack stage come all the way up to the top. And then we start just coming down in the decay stage to the sustain stage, which is just zero. Okay, but what that does is it just creates a poke. See, just a little very sharp transient. Okay, and so, but we what we want to do is we don't want to poke, we want to punch. So think of, literally, this is a ridiculous analogy, but think of poking someone with your finger as opposed to punching them. And so a closed fist has obviously more surface area than just poking someone with your finger. So that's what we want to do. We want to turn this from a poke into a punch, into a closed fist. It's super easy to do this. And we're just going to use saturation. But I'm going to go ahead and see what the output is of this transient layer. So let's go ahead and play it back and jump on over here, reset the master. And so we're sitting around negative 1.65. All right. So I'm going to come over and get a saturator and put it on the transient channel. And we're going to just go down to negative two. We don't need to be crazy precise here. Okay. So basically we've turned it down by negative two. And this also puts a ceiling on the saturator. So no matter how much we drive it, it's not going to go over negative two. And then I'm just going to make up the gain a little bit with drive to negative two. So theoretically, this is basically the input and output is now level matched through the saturator. And it's not it's not exactly right. We can make it exactly right if we want, but I'm just approximating with negative two here. So if we play it now, okay, we just see it just clips down the top of that a little bit. Okay, but we can obviously come up and So that's pretty much uh, technically level matched according to peak value. Okay, so now all we need to do to turn this into a punch is just drive into the output here. So we'll drive into the clipper. And basically, so let's just start doing that. Okay, so there we go. So now we're driving. And so we see we start to create like a punch as opposed to a poke. So if I turn the saturator off, got a little bit of a poke there, right? Poking with someone's finger. And then here we get a punch. OK, now what we can also do is we can start to tighten this up because obviously as we drive into the saturator, we're going to start bringing the level back here up more and more. And so all we need to do is we can just kind of go back and forth between the ADSR, the decay stage and the saturator to get the tightness that we want. So we can just bring the decay down and we can just tighten that up. So as we drive it more, sometimes we want to just come over and decrease the decay and you just get the balance right. Okay. But now what we could do is simply just mix this in like before. So let's hop on over and let's go ahead and listen and mix it in. So let's go, let's go down to negative eight. just adds so much more presence to the front of the kick. And just incidentally, this is a parallel transient layer, but sometimes I'll refer to this whole technique as front loading the kick. And so what I mean by that is simply here's the kick and we're just loading the front of it, right? So the transient, so front loading. 
I'm just gonna duplicate this out just so we can see the difference between the poke and the punch. All right, so here we have kick, we have poke, and we have punch. So what we can do is just kind of go back and forth here. So it's gonna be a pretty subtle difference. The poke channel just, I turned the saturator off. The punch channel, obviously saturator's on. So let's just go kind of back and forth here. Here we go. So it's exactly what you would expect. The punch is a little bit angrier. The poke is a little bit more gentle. Awesome, so that basically covers what I wanna show you using Ableton only plugins to get your kicks to really bite in the mix. Just doing a parallel transient layer and then using saturation to really make that transient punch. And in the next video, we're gonna dive into using the LFO tool now to start doing the separating. Um, it's just a very precise way to work. And uh, further down the line, we'll see how um, this just gets crazier and crazier, but it gets better and better. All right, so if you have any questions about this video, leave it in the comments below or the previous video, you can leave it. And then I can try to address the questions as we develop in the series, in the videos or in the comments, whatever. But uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video.